Chapter 13 Mahatma Gandhi and the Nationalist Movement Civil Disobedience and Beyond Topics 1. A leader announces himself 2. The making and unmaking of non-cooperation Knitting a popular movement A people's leader 3. The Salt Satyagraha, a case study. Dandi Dialogues. 4. Quit India. 5. The Last Heroic Days. 6. Knowing Gandhi. Public Voice and Private Scripts. Framing a Picture Through Police Eyes. From Newspapers. 1. A Leader announces himself. In January 1915, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi returned to India after two decades of residence abroad. These years had been spent for the most part in South Africa, where he went as a lawyer and in time became a leader of the Indian community in that territory. How South Africa Made Gandhi Historian Chandran Devasenan remarked, South Africa was the making of the Mahatma. It was in South Africa that Mahatma Gandhi first forged the distinctive technique of non-violent protest known as Satyagraha, first promoted harmony between religions, and first altered upper caste Indians to their discriminatory treatment of low caste and women. Changes in India Gandhi found in 1915. The Indian National Congress now had branches in most major cities and towns. Through the Swadeshi movement of 1905 to 7, it had greatly broadened its appeal among the middle classes. Swadeshi movement had created some towering leaders, Bal Gangadhar Tilak of Maharashtra, Bipin Chandrapal of Bengal, and Lala Lajpat Rai of Punjab. The three were known as Lal Bal Pal. Extremist Leaders Leaders advocated militant opposition to colonial rule. Lal Bal Pal. Moderate leaders. Moderates preferred a more gradual and persuasive approach. Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Gandhiji's political mentor. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, lawyer of Gujarati extraction. Gandhi in India Early Activities. On Gokhale's advice, Gandhiji spent a year traveling around British India, getting to know the land and its peoples. First major public appearance was at opening of Benares Hindu University. His first major public appearance was at opening of the Benares Hindu University, BHU, in February 1916. Princes and philanthropists participated. Important leaders of the Congress were present, such as Annie Besant. Gandhiji was relatively unknown. Gandhi had invited on account of his work in South Africa. Gandhiji charged the Indian elite with the lack of concern over the laboring poor. The opening of BHU, he said, was certainly a most gorgeous show, but he worried about the contrast between the richly bedecked nobleman present and the millions of the poor Indians who were absent. Gandhiji told the privileged invitees that there is no salvation for India unless you strip yourself of this jewellery and hold it in trust for your countrymen in India. Our salvation can only come through the farmer, neither, neither the lawyers, nor the doctors, nor the rich landlords, landlords 
are going to secure it. Gandhiji reminded those present of the peasants and workers who constituted a majority of the Indian population yet were unrepresented in, in the audience. Importance of Gandhiji's speech at Banaras Gandhiji's speech at Banaras showed that Indian nationalism was an elite phenomenon, a create, creation of lawyers and doctors and landlords. It was also a statement of intent, the first public announcement of Gandhi's own desire to make Indian nationalism more properly representative of the Indian people as a whole. 2. The making and unmaking of non-cooperation Early Satyagraha Experiments in India 1970 Champaran Satyagraha, Bihar 1918 Ahmedabad Textile Mill Labor Dispute, Gujarat 1918 Keda Satyagraha, Gujarat At the annual contest held in Lucknow in December 1916, Gandhi was approached by a peasant from Champaran in Bihar. Gandhi was told him about the harsh treatment of peasants by British indigo planters. Mahatma Gandhi was to spend much of 1917 in Chambaran seeking to obtain for the peasant security of tenor as well as the freedom to cultivate the crops of their choice. The following year 1918, Gandhiji was involved in two campaigns in his home state, home state of Gujarat. First. He intervened in a labor dispute in Ahmedabad, demanding better working conditions for the textile mill workers. Second, he joined peasants in Keda in asking the state for the remission of taxes following the failure of their harvest. Campaign against the Rowlett Act 1919 Rowlett Satyagraha March April 1919 Jalianwala Bad Massacre April 1919-20 Khilafat Movement 1920-22 Non-Cooperation Movement During the Great War of 1914-18, to the British had instituted censorship of the press and permitted detention without trial. On the recommendation of committee chaired by Sir Sidney Rowlett, these Tough measures were continued. In response, Gandhiji called for a countrywide campaign against the Rowlett Act. In towns across North and West India, life came to a standstill as shops shut down and schools closed in response to the Bandh call. The protests were particularly intense in the Punjab. Gandhiji was detained while proceeding to the Punjab prominent local congressmen were arrested. Jallianwala Bagh Massacre The situation in the province grew progressively more tense, reaching a bloody climax in Amritsar in April 1919. A British brigadier ordered his troops to open fire on a nationalist meeting. More than 400 people were killed in what is known as the Jallianwala Bagh Massacre. Non-Cooperation Movement it was the Rowlett Satyagraha that made Gandhiji a truly national leader. Gandhiji called for a campaign of non-cooperation with British rule. Indians who wished colonialism to end were asked to stop attending schools, colleges and law courts and not pay tax. In some, they were asked to adhere to a renunciation of voluntary association with the government. If non-cooperation was effectively carried out, said Gandhiji, India would be in Swaraj within a year. Mergers with Khilafat Movement To broaden the struggle, Gandhiji had joined hands with Khilafat Movement that sought to restore the Caliphate, a symbol of pan-Islamism, which had recently been abolished by the Turkish ruler Kemal Ataturk. What was the Khilafat Movement? The Khilafat Movement 1919-1920 was a movement of Indian Muslims led by Muhammad Ali and Shaukat Ali. 
Khilafat movement demanded the following. A. The Turkish Sultan of Khalifa must retain control over the Muslim sacred places in the Ottoman Empire. B. The Jaziratul Arab, Arabia, Syria, Iraq and Palestine must remain under Muslim sovereignty. C. The Khalifa must be left with sufficient territory to enable him to defend the Islamic faith. The Congress supported the movement and Mahatma Gandhi sought to con conjoin it to the to then non-cooperation non movement. Knitting a popular movement, non-cooperation. Gandhiji hoped that by coupling non-cooperation with Khilafat, India's two major religious communities, Hindus and Muslims, could collectively bring an end to colonial rule. Students stopped going to schools and colleges run by the government. Lawyers refused to attend court. The working class went on strike in many towns and cities. According to official figures, there were 396 strikes in 1921 involving 600,000 workers and a loss of 7 million workdays. Hill tribes in North Northern Andhra violated the forest laws. Farmers in Awadh did not pay taxes. Peasants in Kumun refused to carry loads for colonial officers. Peasants, workers and others interpreted and acted upon the call to non-cooperate with colonial rule in, in ways that best suited their interests. Non-cooperation, wrote Mahatma Gandhi's American biographer Louis Fisher, became the name of an epoch in the life of India and the Gandhiji. It entailed denial, renunciation and self-discipline. It was training for self. As a consequence of the cooperation movement, the British Raj was shaken to its foundations for the first time since the revolt of 1857. Chauri Chaura incident and call of, of call of non-cooperation movement. Why non-cooperation movement called off? In February 1922, a group of peasants attacked and tortured a police station in hamlet of Chauri Chaura in the United Provinces, now Uttar Pradesh and Uttaranchal. Several constab constables perished in the conflagration. This act of violence prompted Gandhiji to call off the movement altogether. During the non-cooperation movement, thousands of Indians were put in jail. Gandhiji himself was arrested in March 1922 and charged with sedition. The judge who presided over his trial, Justice C. N. Broomfield, made a remarkable speech while pronouncing his sentence, six years imprisonment. See text. If the course of events in India should make it possible for the government to reduce the period and release you, no one will be better pleased than I. A People's Leader By 1922, Indian National Movement was no longer a movement of professionals and intellectuals. Now, hundreds of thousands of persons, workers and artisans also participated in it. How Gandhi became popular 1. Dress, symbol 2. Language, common people's language 3. Life, common man 4. Working on the charka 5. Appearance, symbolizing ascetism, abstinence 6. Rumors spread of his miraculous powers Many people venerated Gandhiji, referring to him as their Mahatma. They, they appreciated the fact that he dressed like them, lived like them and spoke their language. Unlike other leaders, he did not stand apart from the common folk but empathized and even identified with them. Dress symbol dhoti or loincloth 
while other nationalist leaders dressed for formally wearing a western suit or an indian bandangala gandhi went among the people in a simple dhoti or loin cloth working on the charka mahatma gandhi with the charka has become the most abiding image of indian nationalism gandhi spent part of each day working on the charka spinning wheel and encouraged other nationalists to do likewise the act of spinning allowed gandhi to break the boundaries boundaries that prevailed within the traditional caste system between mental labor and manual labor known variously as gandhi baba gandhi maharaj or simply as mahatma gandhi ji appeared to be appeared to the indian person as a savior in a fascinating study the historian shahid amin has traced the image of mahatma gandhi among persons of eastern uttar pradesh a hindi newspaper in gorakhpur reported the atmosphere during his speeches see textbook nature of rumors related to gandhi wherever gandhi went rumors spread of his miraculous powers rumor 1 gandhi had been sent by the king to redress the grievances of farmers and that he had the power to overrule all local officials rumor 2 gandhi's power was superior to that of english monarch and that with his arrival the colonial rulers would flee the district rumor 3 villagers who criticized gandhi found their houses mysteriously falling apart or their crop, crops failing two different ways nationalism was taken to the farthest corners of the country one praja mandals in princely states a series of praja mandals were established to promote the nationalist creed in the princely states two linguistic based provincial committees of the congress the provincial committees of the congress were based on linguistic regions rather than on artificial boundaries of british india prosperous businessmen and industrialists support congress indian entrepreneurs recognized that in a free india the favors enjoyed by the british competitors would come to an end some of the entrepreneurs such as g d birla supported the national movement openly others gandhian nationalism between 1917 and 1922 a group of highly talented indians attached themselves to gandhi they included mahadev desai vallabhai patel j b kripalani subhash chandra bose abdul kalam azad jawaharlal nehru sarojini naidu Govind Ballabh Pant and C Rajagopal Acharya After release from prison 1924 as a social reformer Mahatma Gandhi was released from prison in February 1924 He chose to devote his attention to the promotion of home home spun cloth khadi the abolition of untouchability the abolition of child marriage the hindu muslim harmony on the economic front indians had to learn to become self reliant on the economic front indians had to learn to become self reliant hence his stress on the significance of wearing khadi rather than mill made cloth imported from overseas charka mahatma gandhi was profoundly critical of the modern age in which machines ens- enslaved humans and displaced labor He saw the charka as a symbol of human society that would not glorify machines and technology. The spinning wheel moreover could provide the poor with supplementary income and make them self-reliant. The Salt Satyagraha a case study 1928 Simon Commission boycott 1928 Satyagraha in Bardoli 1929 Lahore session of Congress 1930 civil disobedience movement Simon Commission boycott 1928 in 1928 there was an all india campaign in opposition to all white simon commission 
sent from England to enquire into conditions in the colony. Gandhiji did not himself participate in this movement, although he gave it his blessings. Gandhi conducted a peasant satyagraha in Bardoli in the same year. Importance of Lahore Session of Congress In the end of December 1929, the Congress held its annual session in the city of Lahore. The meeting was significant for two things. In 1928, in, in 1928 the election of Jawaharlal Nehru as president, signifying the passing of the baton of leadership to the younger generation, and two, the proclamation of commitment to Purna Swaraj or complete independence. How First Independence Day observed on 26 January 1930 On 26 January 1930, Independence Day was observed with the national flag being hoisted in different venues and patriotic songs being sung. Gandhi himself issued prissy instructions as to know as to how the day should be observed. Gandhiji suggested that the time of the meeting be advertised in the traditional way by the beating of drums. The celebrations would begin with the hoisting of national flag. The rest of the day would be spent in doing some constructive work, whether it is spinning or service of untouchables or reunion of Hindus and Muslims or prohibition work or even all these together, which is not impossible. Participants would take a pledge affirming that it was the in inalienable fight of Indian people as of any other people to have freedom and to enjoy the fruits of their toil and that if any government deprives a people of these rights and oppresses them, the people have a further right to alter it or abolish it. 3. Dandi Civil Disobedience Movement 1930 Soon after the observance of this Independence Day, Mahatma Gandhi announced that he would lead a march to break one of the most widely disliked laws in British India, which gave the state monopoly in the manufacture and sale of salt. Why salt? His picking on the salt monopoly was another illustration of Gandhi's tactical wisdom. For in every Indian household, salt was indispensable, yet people were forbidden from making salt even for domestic use, compelling them to buy it from shops at a high price. The state monopoly over salt was deeply unpopular. By making it his target, Gandhiji hoped to mobilize a wider discontent against British rule. Dandi March Gandhiji had given advance notice of his salt march to the Viceroy Lord Irwin. On 12th March 1930, Gandhi began walking from his ashram at Sabarmadi towards the ocean. He reached his destination three weeks later, making a fistful of salt as he did and thereby making himself a criminal in the eyes of the law. Meanwhile, parallel salt marches were being conducted in other parts of the country. Other streams of protest Across large parts of India, peasants breached the hated colonial forest laws that kept them and their cattle out of the woods in which they had once roamed freely. In some towns, factory workers went on strike while lawyers boycotted British courts and students refused to attend government-run educational institutions. Gandhi's call had encouraged Indians of all classes to make manifest their own discontent with the colonial rule. Response from rulers The rulers responded by detaining the dissenters. In the wake of the salt march, nearly 60,000 Indians were arrested, among them, of course, Gandhiji himself. The progress of Gandhiji's march to the seashore can be traced from the secret reports filed by the police officials deputed to monitor his movements. How Gandhi used Dandi Yatra to spread his ideas. In one village, Vasna, Gandhiji told the upper caste that if you are out of the Swaraj, you must serve untouchables. 
you won't get swaraj merely by the repeal of the salt taxes or other taxes for swaraj you must make amends for the wrongs which you did not did to the untouchables for swaraj hindus muslims parsis and sikhs will have to unite these are the steps towards swaraj the police spies reported that gandhi ji's meetings were very well attended by villages of all castes and by women as well as men writing to the the district superintendent of police remarked mr gandhi appeared calm and collected he is gathering more strength as he proceeds the progress of salt march and time magazine the american news magazine time scorned at gandhi ji's looks writing with this dine of his spindly frame and his spidery loins thus in its first report on the march time was deeply skeptical of the salt march reaching its destination it claimed that gandhi ji sank to the ground at the end of the second day's walking the magazine did not believe that the the emaciated saint would be physically able to go much further but within a week time but within a week time had changed its mind the massive popular following that the march had generated road time had made the british rulers desperately anxious who saluted as a saint and a statesman who was using christian acts as a weapon against men with christian beliefs why was salt the symbol of protest this is what mahatma gandhi wrote see the textbook dialogues round table conferences 1930 1931 and 1932 why salt march is notable three reasons first mahatma gandhi to world attention march was widely covered by the european and Amer- american press second it was the first nationalist activity in which women participated in large numbers the socialist activist kamala devi chadobadhyaya was one of the numerous women women who courted arrested by breaking the salt or liquor laws third it was the salt march which forced upon the british the realization that their raj would not last forever round table conferences the british government convened a series of round table conferences in london first round table conferences in november 1930 The first meeting was held in November 1930. Indian National Congress did not participate. First round table conference became a failure. Gandhi Irwin Pact. Gandhi ji was released from jail in January 1931. The following month had several long meetings with the Viceroy Irwin. These culminated in what was called the Gandhi Irwin Pact. Civil disobedience would be called off. all prisoners released salt merchants salt manufacture allowed along the coast a second round table conference december 1931 a second round table conference was held in london in the later part of 1931 gandhi ji represented the congress however his claims that his party represented all the india all of india came under challenge from three parties from the muslim league which claimed to stand the interest of the muslim minority from the princes who claimed that the congress had no stake in their territory territories and from the brilliant lawyer and thinker b r ambedkar who argued that gandhi ji and the congress did not really represent the lowest castes mahatma gandhi opposed the demand for separate electorates for lower castes he believed that this would prevent their integration into mainstream society and permanently segregate them from other caste hindus the conference in london was inconclusive so gandhi ji returned to india and resumed civil disobedience the new viceroy lord willington was deeply unsympathetic to the indian leader in a private letter to his sister willington wrote it is a beautiful world if it wasn't for gandhi 
third round table conference 1932 and government of india act 1935 third round table conference held in 1932 without participation of congress government of india act passed on the ba basis of conference government of india act promised some form of representative government. election in 1937 an election held on the basis of restricted franchise the congress won a comprehensive victory now 8 out of 11 provinces had a congress prime minister working under the supervision of british governor why congress ministries resigns in 1939 in september 1939 2 years after the congress 2 years Two years after the Congress ministries assumed office, the Second World War broke out. Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru had both been strongly critical of Hitler and the Nazis. Accordingly, the, they promised Congress support to the war effort, to the war effort, if the British in turn promised to grant India independence once hostilities ended. the offer was refused by congress in protest the congress ministries resigned in october 1939 series of individual satyagrahas 1940 41 through 1940 and 41 the congress organized a series of individual satyagrahas to pressure the rulers to promise freedom once the war war had ended Muslim League Resolution of 1940 A three-way struggle between the Congress, the Muslim League and the British. In March 1940, the Muslim League passed a resolution demanding a measure of autonomy for the Muslim majority areas of the subcontinent. The political landscape was now becoming complicated. It was no longer Indians versus the British, rather it had become three-way struggle between the Congress, the Muslim League and the British. Cripps Mission, 1942. At this time, Britain had an all-party government whose Labour members were sympathetic to Indian aspirations. But Conservative Prime Minister Winston Churchill was a die-hard imperialist. In the spring of 1942, Churchill was persuaded to send one of his minister to, ministers, Sir Stafford Cripps, to India to try and forge a compromise with, with Gandhi and the Congress. Congress insisted that if it was to help the British defend India from the Axis powers, then the Viceroy had first to appoint an Indian as the defense member of his executive council. Talks broke down, mission failed. Quit India. After the failure of the Cripps mission, Mahatma Gandhi decided to launch his third major movement against the British rule. This was the Quit India, a campaign which began in August 1942. Although Gandhi was jailed at once, younger act activists organized strikes and acts of sabotage all over the country. particularly active in the underground resistance were socialist members of the congress such as jay prakash narayan in several districts such as satara in the west and medinipur in the east independent governments were proclaimed the british responded with much more but with much force yet it took more than a year to suppress the rebellion quit india was genuinely a mass movement bringing into its ambit hundreds of thousands of ordinary indians it especially energized the young who in large numbers left their colleges to go into jail muslim league influences grows muslim league influence grows jinnah and his colleagues in the muslim league worked patiently at expanding their influence It was in these years that the league began to make a mark in the Punjab and Sindh provinces where it had previously had scarcely any present. In June 1944, with the end of the war in sight, 
Gandhiji was released from prison. Later that year he held a series of meetings with Jinnah seeking to bridge the gap between the Congress and the League. Way well plan 1945. In 1945 a labor government came into power in Britain and committed itself for granting independence to India. The Viceroy Lord Wavell brought the Congress and the League together for a series of talks. Early in 1946 fresh elections were held held to the provincial legislatures. The Congress swept the general category but in the seats specially reserved for Muslims the League won an overwhelming majority. Cabinet Mission 1946 A cabinet mission sent in the in the summer of 1946 failed to get the Congress and the League to agree on on a federal system that would keep India together while allowing the provinces a degree of autonomy. Muslim League's direct action on 16th August 1946. After the talks broke down, Jinnah called for a direct action day. to press the league's demand for pakistan on the designated day 16 august 1946 bloody riots broke out in calcutta the violence spread to rural bengal then to bihar and then across the country to the united provinces and the punjab in some places muslims were the main sufferers in other places hindus mount batten plan india gains independence In February 1947, Wavell was replaced as Viceroy by Lord Mountbatten. Mountbatten called the last round of talks, but when these two proved inconclusive and he announced that British India would be freed, but also divided. The formal transfer of power was fixed for 15 August. When that day came, it was celebrated with gusto in different parts of India. In Delhi there was applause when the president of the constituent assembly began the meeting by invoking the father of the nation Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi outside the assembly the crowd shouted Mahatma Gandhi ki jai 5 the last heroic days Mahatma Gandhi was not present at the festivities festivities in the capital on 15th August 1947 He was in Calcutta but he did not attend any function or hoist a flag there either Gandhi marked the day with a 24 hour fast The freedom he had struggled so long for had come at an unacceptable price with a nation divided and Hindus and Muslims at each other's throat Through September and October writes his biographer D G Tendulkar Gandhi ji went round hospitals and refugee camps give, giving consolation to distressed people he appealed appealed to the sikhs the hindus and the muslims to forget the past and not to dwell their sufferings but to extend the right of the fellowship to each other and to determine to live in peace at the initiative of gandhi ji and nehru the congress now passed the resolution on the rights of the minorities the party had never accepted the two nation theory forced against it will to accept the partition it is still believed that india is a land of many religions and many races and must remain so whatever be the situation in pakistan india would be a democratic secular state many scholars have written of the months after independence as being gandhi ji's finest hour After working to bring peace to Bengal, Gandhi ji now shifted to Delhi from where he hoped to move on to the riot torn district of Punjab. While in capital, he, his meetings were disrupted by refugees who objected to readings from the Quran or shouted slogans asking why he did not speak of the suffering of sufferings of those Hindus and Sikhs still, still living in Pakistan. In fact as DG Tendulkar writes Gandhi ji was equally concerned with the suffering of the minority community in Pakistan End of Gandhi's life There was an attempt on Gandhi's life on 20 January 1948 but he carried on 
undaunted. On 26 January, he spoke at his prayer meeting of how that day had been celebrated in the past as Independence Day. Gandhi ji had fought a lifelong battle for a free and united India. and yet when the country was divided he urged that the two parts respect and befriend one another assassination at his daily prayer meeting on the evening of 30 january gandhi ji was shot dead by a young man the assassin who surrendered after wars was a brahmin from pune named naduram godse the editor of an extremist hindu newspaper who had denounced gandhi ji an appeaser of muslims response to death of gandhi gandhi ji's death led to an extraordinary outpouring of grief with rich tributes being paid to him from across the political spectrum in india and moving appreciations coming from such international figures as george orwell Albert Einstein Response of Time magazine to Gandhi's death Time magazine had once mocked Gandhi's physical size and seemingly non-rational ideas Time magazine now compared his martyrdom to that of Abraham Lincoln it was a bigoted american who had killed lincoln for believing that human beings were equal regardless of their race or skin color and it was the bigot it was a bigoted hindu who had killed gandhi who had killed gandhi for believing that friendship was possible indeed necessary between indians of different faiths in in this respect as time wrote the world knew that it had in a sense in a sense too deep too simple for the world to understand connived at his death as it had connived at lingers 6 knowing gandhi sources 1 public voices speeches 2 private scripts letters 3 autobiographies 4 government records or police reports 5 newspaper reports public voice and private scripts one important source is the writings and speeches of mahatma gandhi and his contemporaries speeches allow us to hear the public voice of an individual private letters give us glimpses of his or her private thoughts in letters we see people expressing their anger and pain their dismay and anxiety their hopes and frustrations mahatma gandhi regularly published in his journal Hydrogen letters that others wrote to him Nehru edited a collection of letters written to him during the national movement and published a bunch of old letters 2 framing a picture autobiographies autobiographies simply gives uh, gives us an account of the past that is often rich in human detail we need to remember that they are retrospective accounts written very often from memory they tell us what the uh, what the other could co- recollect what he or she saw as important or was keen on recounting or how a person wanted his or her life to be viewed by others so in reading these accounts we have to try and see what the other does not tell us we need to understand the reasons for that silence those willful or unwitting fa- unwitting acts of forgetting 3 3 through police eyes the letters and reports written by policemen and other officials now can be accessed in archives the fortnightly reports were prepared by the home department from the early 20th century these reports were based on police information from the localities but often expressed what the higher officials saw or wanted to believe for for from newspapers one important source is newspapers published in english as well as in the different indian languages newspaper accounts may be prejudiced the accounts that were published in london newspaper would be different from 
the report in indian nationalist paper every statement made in this cannot be accepted literally as representing what was happening on the ground they often reflect the fears and anxieties of officials who were unable to control a movement